definitely the lady type in the sense that she is highly educated, very well polished, she dresses well, she presents herself in a professional way. So these are some demonstrations of the way in which um, she is a lady. Does not use foul language, right? So she perfectly exemplifies the mother, essentially the whore, and the lady tropes. Cultural misorientation, according to Cody Camboon, that is essentially based on three tiers, minimal, moderate, and moderate, rather, and severe. Minimal uh, cultural misorientation occurs when individuals possess an uh, overwhelming predominance of internalized uh, African-centered anti-European cultural values, beliefs, and attitudes. So some examples of someone that exemplifies a minimal cultural misorientation um, these are individuals that refuse to watch Scandal. I've heard some people say, I'm just, I'm not going to watch that because uh, I know what it's about. Those, those would be some examples. Or do not be sca uh, sc uh, Scandal solely as entertainment. So these would be minimal. Another example, they believe the show furthest the goals of white supremacy. And then lastly, they see a clear connection between contemporary and historical realities. Remember during the Octoroon Balls, when women were essentially paraded right, essentially as potential mistresses for white married men, right? <coughs> what, what we see happening in contemporary society has an historical tie, right, to the experiences of black women uh, as well. The moderate is an internalized European, uh, Eurocentric, African-centered uh, orientation. The individual possesses a much stronger identification with Eurocentric consciousness and desire to maintain parts of the African-centered identity. So these are essentially indi many individuals who are essentially right in the middle, right? There are many uh, values, African values, like for, for example, as collectivism, right? Uh, thinking as a group, doing things for the group, that's, that might be a value that they hold dear. But at the same time, they, they equally want to fit in with white culture, with white values, with white attitudes with white behavior. Some examples would be frequent and, and or uh, avid viewers of scandal, view scandal solely as entertainment, believe scandal puts black womanhood in a positive light, acknowledges the social historical mistreatment of blacks in society, uh, um, yet embrace the Pope uh, Fitz relationship. So these are the individuals that say, you know, slavery was a, t a terrible thing, right? But at the same time, it's just entertainment. Right, kind of like that. And then severe, this is the last and most um, detrimental psychologically, according to uh, Cody Camboon, in terms of uh, cultural disorientation. This is internalized, Eurocentric, uh, anti African centered orientation. So the individual possesses an overwhelming predominance of internalized, Eurocentric, anti American, anti African cultural values, beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. So like the, like the moderate, uh, the severe, uh, oftentimes they are, they're avid and frequent viewers of scandal. They view scandal solely as entertainment. They believe the show is evidence of a post-racial society, right? So what do, you, like, what do you mean that there's racism, right? Uh, we have President Obama in office. And this show came, came to our consciousness, right, when Obama was in office. Right? The fact that a white president can be in a very uh, romantic relationship with a black woman is evidence that we've come far. We've come very, very far, right? So what racism? And then lastly, do not acknowledge the connection between contemporary and historical realities. So for example, an individual that demonstrates his last one would say, we're in 2016. What does, what does what happened in 1855 have anything to do with today, right? So I think, I think many people essentially kind of are in the kind of moderate, right, um, uh, category here. So in, in with me and um, Dr. Robertson, uh, in the paper that we're writing, there's, there's several things that are key to scandal success. Now, while I've already mentioned 
the fact that Shonda Rhimes, uh, as you know, she has a great uh, directorial prowess and a keen insight, right? And um, Terry Washington is a very accomplished actress. Um, there are other things in terms of special racial and kind of positionality dynamics that also are key to scandal success. The first is that if the racial dynamics were switched, this would not work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, if Fitz were black and Olivia were white, <laughs> no way. If, no way. I, I, I mentioned this during the presentation. It's no way. I mean, remember every show before it's actually, all, you know, in terms of when it will come on the network at the specific time or whatever, it has been pilot tested before it even goes on the air. So this got a green light with test audiences even before ABC even considered it, right? Because why should ABC put their money on this show and they can put it on a more successful show and then they can get a whole lot of money from uh, sponsors, you know, because it's kind of, it's, it's key viewership time, whatever. So if the racial dynamics, and does anyone disagree with that? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> and then the second, um, even if the racial dynamic were switched, um, it's, it still would be short-lived because we're living in the Obama age, right? So in our paper, we argue that on, for many people, it would be on a conscious level, but I think for most people, it would operate on an unconscious level. To see this person is black, and this person is white, and this person is the president, and this person is not, on an unconscious level, it would hearken comparisons to Barack cheating on Michelle. Does that make sense? Why? It, wouldn't, it would not work. It would not work. Right? So we're looking at the racial dynamic and then we're also looking at yeah. I'm curious. So let's just say if it were a if President Obama was just not the president and we had a right president in office, but they still somebody were to write a show, do you feel like maybe they wouldn't put a black president with a white mistress because they want to protect the black man more than they want to protect the black woman? It's okay for the black woman to be the mistress of the, the white man because that's more acceptable than having Basically, you want to protect the black man and his image because society will attack him for whatever reason, but it's okay to let the black woman play the mistress. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, like to protect the black man, but not protect the black woman from being the Jezebel or being the mistress. It's okay for her, but it's not okay for the black man to be president to have a white mistress. I got you. That, that is an interesting point. Um, yeah, yeah, someone was while I'm thinking. Okay, in the back. so what I've noticed here in America, if it was a black man with a, with a white mistress, that would be okay. If you just look at television, all your basketball players, your rappers, and all that kind of stuff with the white women. You know, so that wouldn't be a problem. People would be more accepting to a black man with a white woman. Because you, you think that would work? I think that's because we expect it for an athlete. But for a man of a certain power, like a president, that means he had to go over certain hoops and boundaries to get to the president. So we have to protect that black man who got the president versus, we don't have to necessarily protect the black woman who's the mistress of a white president. That's what I'm saying. Like, you so think you that think maybe, this, if I'm understanding correctly, sorry. as a, as a protection, by making the, the fifth character who is president white, it's, and not black, it's protecting President Obama in a way? No, I'm saying that they're not protecting the black woman. The black woman has to take the fall or has to have part of the bad image of being somebody's mistress. Whereas they wouldn't even put that situation, maybe they would never, a black person may not ever write a story where a black president is in office and married to a black woman and has a white mistress because they don't want to tarnish that image because a black man getting becoming president means he had to work so hard to get there. Gotcha. And we're not going to write a story about a black man with a white mistress because we want to protect our black man. But it's okay for the woman to have the black woman to have this bad image of being a mistress. Yes, she does all these great things, but it's okay she can be the mistress. So there's no protection for the black woman. Excellent point. I saw another hand over here. I think. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the same. Thank you. I'm saying. The black woman takes a fall to be a mistress. So we would never push a but black man. But, but, but before I go to the point in the back, I mean, 
Olivia as the mistress already fits into the Jezebel trope. Mm -hmm. I mean, neatly. So, so when you look at how black women have been portrayed in film since the beginning of the film industry, she, she, like, she's not an outlier, really. I think a lot of people, and that's one of the arguments that we make in the paper, people don't tend to see her in that way. Because she's so successful, and, she, and, and she's the person that white people in trouble go to. Right? So you, you, it, it's difficult to see her in a Jezebel role when they decide it well. They and that and that's and that's what we're saying. Exactly. But she still is the Jezebel. And I and I would argue the matriarch and the um um the, the diva as well. I saw yes please. I think with Olivia it kinda of takes us back to the time when we were slaves and we were just the I don't, I don't know how to put it, but we were basically the whores for the masses. He, I mean, you were good enough to work his field, to clean his house, and even breastfeed his children, but you were nothing but somebody he went to see at midnight plus. And I think that's what, when I watch the show, that's kind of what I thought about it. Him just, he's this powerful man, and she, even though she's this powerful woman on the show, taking back to slavery time where she's nothing more to him than a human body that he can inject in. Exactly. Especially, I think it was that second clip, baby, Baby, sweet baby, where he was like, come over here now. I mean, I, I even heard many of you like, you kind of groan, right? Like, the, you can you can feel the ownership. That's why I deliberately got that got that clip, because it's kind of like, I own you. And remember, when she said no, what what did he say? You don't tell me no. You, you don't tell me no. And then he was like, well, I'm going to come where you are. Like, basically, I'm going to see you. Either, so how do you want to do this? Come to me, or I come to you. Either way, what I want it's going to take precedent over what you want. Yes. I feel like picking back on what she said, one of the other episodes that really good is that when she has a fight with her mom, and her mom actually tells her, you're just a help. And he was having problems with his wife and their kids. And he was like, she was trying to intervene and say, hey, we got to get this done. He's like, yells at her like, no, I'm dealing with my family right now. And it was just kind of like a rude awakening for her, like what her mom was saying, like, you really are the help. And I mean, I watch it. I used to watch it all the time. And that's what he loves about her. She cleans up after his messes. She makes him like a stronger and better man. Like her father even said, you know, you're the man that she made you. You are a weak man. She made you strong. So that's just, but and it's, it's a different parallel because you have, even though she does all this for him, like last season, okay, well, I dropped the car. You know what? Your wife dealt with you on this emotional level. I don't want to deal with you on this emotional level. I'm done and leave time. So that's why it's an interesting parallel because it's it, it has these tropes and like like you were saying with the mammy and the Jezebel. Well, not the mammy, but you know, with the Jezebel and those things. But then it also parallels and contrasts because in 2016, you don't see white men literally going to war for people like the president for for Olivia. Like you don't see that in 2016. Or you don't see even just black women being able to date white men like that and empower and the white men in some instances submit to her like he literally went to war illegally for her. So it's a just it's an interesting parallel I find because while it does have these traditions like you said with those tropes, it also defines what you're used to with feminism. And like feminism where, you know, I don't need a man or I don't want you in this way or I'm going to do what I want to do at the end of the day. So it's just interesting.